My name is Zach Plyam, and I'm a sophomore at Yale University. I'm on my college debate team, and I've been debating since my freshman year of high school. Today, I will be speaking with Chris Finan, the president of the American Booksellers Foundation for Free Expression, and the editor of National Security and Free Speech, the debate since 9-11. I think that it's common for young people to feel that issues of national policy and freedom are too grand and complex for them to seriously address, and that these issues don't affect them personally. Why is it important for young people to think about these issues, and do you have any advice for youth as they read about and consider issues related to national security and free speech? Well, national security is something that we all worry about, I think, uh, and has much, much more direct uh, relevance to them immediately. And when I was first working on this book, uh, the, the uh, Boston bombing took place and the Boston Marathon bombing. You know, it drove home for me again, you know, the relevance of uh, certainly uh, protecting the country, uh, that, that this country is threatened from abroad and some of our enemies are actually in the United States. Uh, and there are legitimate concerns that people have about uh, their safety and the freedom of speech part is the thing that uh, perhaps doesn't immediately strike young people as relevant because they they've grown up in a country where uh, they assume that free speech is something that they've always had and and they always will have what they don't really understand because they don't know the history uh, is that uh, freedom of speech uh, is something that we've had to fight for in this country for many years and that the, the freedoms that we enjoy now are the results of those fights and that when government takes additional power as it has in, in this per current uh, national security crisis, there is always a danger that in uh, protecting us, the government will go beyond protecting us and actually threaten that freedom. Uh, so it's a harder issue to understand, but I think the relevance is made apparent in this book. Your book focuses on five issues related to the controversy. Reader privacy, gags and government secrecy, whistleblowers, the prosecution of terror supporters, and government surveillance. How did you choose these five specific issues to address? Well, these are uh, issues uh, where uh, national security and free speech came into some conflict, and uh, there was concern that the expansion of government's power would have a chilling effect on other on the expression of uh, of opinion. The reader privacy fight, uh, which starts the book, uh, and which I was actually uh, involved in personally because I'm an advocate for booksellers in my uh, my full time life, and government has shown an unhealthy interest in what we read. Uh, on more than one occasion, and there was concern that the, that the Patriot Act, which was passed soon after the 9-11 attacks, gave the government the power to go in and seize any records uh, that uh, it was interested in, merely by saying that they were necessary for, for national security. And in fact, that's still the case. Um, there have been amendments to the Patriot Act since then, but uh, the government has today tremendous power to conduct su surveillance not only of, uh, of countries abroad, but of Americans too. Government has gotten this expanded power at a time when it's also, there's an increasing amount of secrecy about what government's doing. So we have very little idea of what uh, exactly the government is doing, and very few people uh, who don't have top secret clearances do know. And this is, uh, this is a concern. So um, the reader privacy issue uh, came up on that uh, on that point. The Patriot Act authorizes the government to gag people who receive orders, secret orders, to turn over records so that um, we're not able, as we were before, to challenge these orders in court if they're overbroad and they seem to threaten our right to speak. The uh, whistleblowers um, are a group that emerged strongly, most strongly, and, and, and are a key key players in keeping the public informed at a time when secrecy is, is so, uh, so vast. Government surveillance, the section on government surveillance really deals with the loosened rules that the FBI operates under now uh, since 9-11. Uh, and the terrorist supporters is really a, a, a section in which we're uh, examining cases in which people who have been alleged to be terrorist supporters 
um, and in fact have been indicted and convicted of being terrorist supporters. Some of them appear to be guilty of really of nothing more than uh, verbal advocacy for groups that we consider terrorists, but they're guilty of themselves of no actual violent acts. So these are, uh, these are the cutting edge of the, the free speech and, and national security debate. In one passage from the book, former Attorney General John Ashcroft argues that we should not let unnecessary procedural red tape interfere with the prevention of terrorist activities. How can we determine which regulations are unnecessary and which are essential for defending our rights? And who should be the one to decide this? Well, first of all, what former Attorney General John Ashcroft calls procedural red tape, uh, some others of us call important protections for our rights to uh, to speak and, and advocate for our, our views. Part of this debate, and part of the debate about the Patriot Act, uh, has been that that in previous decades, in the in the 80s, in particular, uh, government in reaction to abuses that took place uh, by the government uh, during the Vietnam War and during Watergate, created a number of safeguards uh, laws that protect us from abuses of government surveillance power. And uh, that's always kind of stuck in the, the throat of the, the law enforcement community. And many saw the Patriot Act, the 9-11 uh, attacks, as an example of why these laws had to be repealed. And um, so what Ashcroft was saying in that is that, you know, we need a freer hand uh, in order to conduct surveillance. There were uh, definitely uh, aspects of the law that had to be changed. and. But the Patriot Act is, in fact, you know, is a, is a carte blanche, really, for the government to obtain any information that it feels is necessary. And what we've discovered just in recent days is that government has taken that uh, freedom and really uh, kind of run rampant with it in the, uh, the, re the revelations by Edward Snowden, the NSA analyst, that, in fact, government is seizing all telephone records in the country in order to be able to conduct investigations. And significant aspects of the internet are under surveillance by the government. The government is, is now taking pictures of everybody's mail. Every piece of mail in this country is now in a database somewhere that the government can use to search when it feels that it needs that power. Part of the problem is we didn't know about that program, that NSA program, until Snowden took his life in his hands, really, and revealed these, these facts, and is now, in fact, he's under indictment for having conducted that. Our belief is that, uh, that the secret court that authorized the surveillance, you know, has been making decisions that have not had proper oversight, even though there are committees in Congress that uh, are charged with uh, watching what's going on in the national security establishment. It's hard to debate programs that you don't know about. The balance that the government has struck now between national security and free speech has gone far too heavily toward the government and that the government has a right to keep secrets and the government needs to keep secrets and should keep secrets. But we need to be able to know the scope of what the government is doing so that we can debate these things. There are no rules you know, that, that really guide us in a situation like this. The only way we know and can determine that we're doing the right thing is by having a debate about it. And, and that, of course, is the, is the purpose of the book, is to, to help students come to their own conclusions about whether these policies are excessive um, or, in fact, are you know, are, are necessary, maybe not even expansive enough. It's, you know, this is about an ongoing conversation that, that we have to have in this country, and it can't be, you know, right now it's too one-sided, I feel. Another topic this book addresses is whistleblowers. With the ongoing Edward Snowden drama, this is clearly a timely topic. What is your stance on whistleblowers? What factors might make some more praiseworthy or blameworthy than others? Well, there is, a wall of secrecy now hiding what the government is doing. And some of that secrecy is, is necessary. But having that wall uh, allows government officials who may be bad actors or uh, simply uh, people who misunderstand uh, the rules 
uh, that have been established to prevent abuses. Uh, it protects their misbehavior from our oversight. Whistleblowers play an essential role in, in informing the American public about what exactly is going on in the national security, uh, national security area. And it's interesting that in a poll of Americans, you know, uh, while the government is excoriating Edward Snowden, that most Americans see him as a whistleblower rather than uh, somebody who should, who should be punished for you know, illegally disclosing government secrets. And that's because I think we all recognize that we need to know what's, what's going on. A whistleblower obviously is taking their life in their hands. They've sworn to protect the secrecy and they know that they're going to be prosecuted when they when they release uh, this information. And they have a responsibility and to themselves, if no, to nobody else, to, to be sure that you know, what they're leaking is, uh, is serving the public interest. And, and that when, when they do that, most whistleblowers expect that they're going to pay the price, you know, that they're going to, to be punished for what they did. And, um, and they, they have to be willing to accept responsibility for that. These are acts of civil disobedience. These are just like, uh, you know, marches against when injunctions existed to, you know, prevent people from marching. These are acts against, not against the government, but they're acts against the law, and there are going to be legal consequences. So, so whistleblowers have to be willing to accept those consequences. How can we balance the government's need for secrecy in certain situations with the need to protect civil liberties? We have to involve the courts, that we, we have to, when we can, we need to challenge uh, government, what appears to be abuses by the government. And that has happened, um, even though it's, it's much harder than it used to be because of the amount of secrecy that's involved. Um, but we've seen challenges by the operators of internet service providers uh, to gag orders that were intended to keep them silent about turning over records to the government. We've seen librarians in Connecticut challenge a, um, a national security letter, uh, which is one of, those, uh, one of those orders, and to successfully force the government to allow them to speak about this issue. And um, so the courts have played an important role. Congress needs to play its role if we're reauthorizing the Patriot Act periodically. Congress needs to, to be asking the executive uh, exactly what's going on and amending the law when it appears to be interpreted in a way that is, you know, that is too broad. So we need, in, in short, we need to be fighting about this stuff. I mean, debate is just another, you know, another word for fight. You know, we need to, we need to fight for these rights um, and force the government to prove that it needs all the power that it says it does.